we're going to make a what if analysis for making an investment decision. And our investment decision is based on the simple interest future value formula. We've all had savings accounts where we've had a given amount of dollars that we put in the savings account at a given interest over a given number of years and months. And the principal, which is the initial investment, accrues with the interest amount, giving us some future value. And the future value is our original principal plus the interest the bank is willing to pay us for our deposit. So we need to make a decision here. We have three scenarios. In each of the three scenarios, we have $10,000 we want to invest. We can invest that at 5, 6, or 7 percent, but at each investment rate, uh, the money is tied up for a period of years. At 5 percent, one year, 6 percent, two years, 7 percent, three years. So those are the three scenarios, and we need to make a decision for us what's going to work best for us. The parameters of that decision is based on how much we're going to deposit, our principal value, the interest rate the bank is going to pay us, and the number of periods we're going to tie our money up. Those are also the decision variables. The values that go into those parameters are the decision variables that ultimately will lead us to make an investment decision for ourselves. So how do we build this decision model, this what-if analysis? It's very easy. The first thing you want to do is go up on top of the ribbon and click on the data tab. And when you click on the data tab, you can see right over here, what if analysis. And that's exactly what we're doing, scenario manager, because we have three scenarios. So what we want to do is we want to add each of the three scenarios and put in the values. So the first thing we do is we click add. And we give it a name that makes sense to us. And we'll just call this scenario one. And scenario one is by changing what cells. Well, the cells that we're going to actually change are our decision variable cells. So that would be B14, 15, and 16. Click OK. So, and then Excel, as we build the model, says, what values do, we, do you want to put in for each of those decision variables? Well, for B14, for scenario one, the deposit amount is $10,000. B15 is the interest rate, and the interest rate for scenario one is 5%, and we always enter it as a decimal format, never as a percentage. And then finally, what is our interest rate for scenario one? Excuse me, what is the number of periods for scenario one? And it's one year. And we click Add. Now we can add scenario two. Give it a name. Changing what cells? Well, we're going to change the exact same cells, the exact same parameters with the decision variables in B14, 15, and 16. We don't need to do anything. We can move on. For B14, scenario two, $10,000 again. Our interest rate this time is 0.06, and the number of years for our money is 2. Click Add. And finally, Scenario 3. Again, the decision variables will appear in B14, 15, and 16. I don't need to do anything. I do need to go back and for scenario three, my investment is 10,000. My interest rate at this time is 7%. And since I'm willing to give it to the bank uh, for three years, they raise the interest rate a little bit on me, so there. Now, at this time, I, I have three scenarios. I don't need to add another one. I simply can click OK. And there we have scenario one, two, and three. We'll come back to that in a second. The next thing we need to do is we need to add the formula. The formula that will take those decision variables, the values in those variables, 
plug it in and actually show us what our future value would be. So here it is. This is where we're going to plug the formula in. We're going to plug this formula in there, the future value. So we go up to our function bar and as always we begin every Excel formula with the equal sign. And this time as we read left to right on the formula we're going to select the cell in which the value will appear. So present value appears where? Well it appears right down here in B14. So I click on B14 times times in Excel is an asterisk denoted by an asterisk parenthesis 1 plus parenthesis and then I the value for interest is in B15 times the number of periods which is in B16 and we close our parenthesis and there it is. So we have translated our financial formula into a formula that Excel understands in the model having absolute references to the cells in which those values appear. Press enter. And if you've put the formula in correctly and you have the correct number of cell references and left leaning and right leaning parenthesis it will show up as a value. So let's go back to what if analysis pull up our scenario manager and let's do scenario one and given scenario one show me the money so we can go down here and we can click show when I click show look what happens look how Excel populates the fields over here the, the, the cells in value in these decision variable cells so let's go ahead and click show and there it is so for scenario one I invest 10,000 five percent one year my future value is going to be ten thousand five hundred let's look at scenario two show me the money ten thousand two years six percent each year eleven thousand two hundred we know that to be a true ten thousand times uh... six percent is six hundred two years six hundred plus six hundred is twelve hundred twelve hundred plus our principal value is eleven thousand two hundred looks good and finally scenario three show me the results 10,000 seven percent for three years is going to give me a future value of my money in the bank of twelve thousand one hundred dollars great the model really looks good but we can even make it look better so suppose you were a banker and uh, your customers coming in and you were going to present them with these three scenarios wouldn't it nice to show them a picture to actually give them a visualization of what this data looks like. Well, we can do that. Well, first of all, what we want to do is uh, make sure that you have the click summary and make sure the resulting cell is selected as the cell in which the formula is located. This is extremely important. This is where most students make their first mistake you must select the cell in which you've entered the formula. So right there is our cell, B11. And when we click OK, look what happens down here. Excel is going to build a new sheet in our workbook and create a model. So let's click OK. And there it is. So it created a new tab. It says Scenario Summary this is a new sheet and over here is our original sheet sheet one with all our work click back on summary scenario summary there it is so again as a banker our client is going to come in here in another hour or two they're going to make hopefully a decision to put their money in our bank and we can show them our scenario summary a beautiful model showing them three scenarios as how to invest ten thousand dollars with the different parameters of interest and number of periods. But let's show them a picture. A picture is worth a thousand words. So what we can do is we can actually select the outcomes of our three scenario decisions and go up here to insert and we can do a column graph chart 
Let's do 3D, make it look nice. And there it is. So let's drag this. And put this right below our data, our outcome. Okay, get this lined up perfectly. And there we have it. So not only do we have the representation of the data, but we also have a visual representation. Is it complete? Absolutely not. Uh, you never ever want to present a chart graph to someone without the proper labels. So what we need to do is we need to go back to the chart and you see as we select the chart, let's click off the chart and click on the chart. When we click on the chart, the chart is highlighted with a gray border and up here it comes up chart tools and we can change the color of the chart, the graph, we can do the layout, and when we click on the layout tab this is really important so now we can go over to chart title and all charts must have a title let's put it above the chart and we'll simply say future value future value scenarios so we know exactly what we're looking at. But what are the titles? So what are we looking at on the x-axis? So let's go down here the horizontal axis. And let's give that a name. And on the horizontal axis, what we're looking at is our scenarios. So we'll say scenarios. Perfect. And on the vertical axis, or the y-axis, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at the future value of each of the scenarios. And there we have it. And we'll click off. So when our client comes in and sits down at the bank, we can readily show the client our decision model. We have three scenarios. The parameters are the principal, the interest, and the number of periods of the investment. Those decision variables, the decision that the investor is going to use, is based on the interest rate, the number of periods of investing those $10,000. So now he or she can not only see the data, but have a visual representation and make a good decision. And there we have it, our first what-if decision model.